Hey guitar friends, what's going on? I am very excited to share this video with you because this is one another one of my bucket list fingerstyle songs uh, that I've been going through recently. It's Doc Watson's version of Deep River Blues. Really killer song. Uh, before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell notification so you know when new lessons come out. And also, if you need help getting over any hurdles or just continuing to learn a guitar, go to guitarfam.com, create your complimentary account, go through the courses there, and uh, you can even schedule a personal private one-on-one -on -one lesson with me. The first one's complimentary, so there's no risk or obligation. Okay, let's get into this. I have the tab for you, so don't forget to download that. You can find that in the link below. Um, I really don't think about chord shapes that much. Throughout the song, I just think of you know where to put my fingers. You can think about chord shapes, it's up to you. They're all written on the tab for you. It starts off with an E7. This one. It's kind of related to this E7. You're not hitting that low root out there. You're just getting that shape. And your um, bass note for the first few measures, for the first three measures, are just the low E string and the D string. So you have your constant bass for the first four measures. And when the shape changes, the note changes on the bass, on uh, the D string. Anyway, you mute those bass notes throughout the entire song. Pretty much if the notes occur on the low E, A, and most of the time the D string is gonna be heavily muted uh, with your palm right here, so keep that in mind. So get this shape on there. That's pinky on the seventh fret, on the high E string, middle finger on the sixth fret of the D string, third finger, seventh fret of the G and first finger on the fifth fret of the B string and that gives you your E7 chord along with your open low E string there. Anyway, you have your notes in the first measure, just the A, S, A, E, and D strings and then the notes for um, the melody are just, and the fingers I'm using that with and these are just suggestions, the fingerings throughout this. Or middle, index, middle, and then index again. And that's on the high E, G, B, and high E string. So it's kind of just starting on the high E and, and rolling up and finish off with your bass. Keep that bass going. One more time. And this is really the shape that starts out every variation on the song. There are three variations we're gonna go through in this version of Deep River Blues, and they all start with this E7 shape. And most of the work in the song is being done with your right hand. The left hand isn't doing too much. It's got, you know, it's, it's nothing crazy going on here. Some weird shapes, but that's about it. So from there, you collapse these three fingers down, second, third, and fourth fingers down, and leave your index finger where it is to create an E diminished chord. And you play that exact same pattern. You have just the E, D, E, D, and then same exact pattern uh, with high E, G, B, high E again, and the same fingers I use there. So the first two measures together. And you can, the fingerings again are just suggestions. Doc Watson uses just his index finger. I don't know how he does that. He's insane, we all know this. I try to alternate index and middle finger as much as possible just uh, so it's not as tough on any one finger. And then you go back, the next measure goes back to this E7 shape we started out with, it goes. And it, the, the bass notes are just E and D again, so E, D, E, D. But you have this weird bend right here where you have to start off with that seventh for the high E string. And you have to reach over with the, on the eighth fret of the B string with your pinky and bend that up by kind of a quarter, a half step, but just a quarter step bend really. And then get the open uh, high E string there in the next melody. And then the seventh fret of the G string and then the last bass note. So it really take this one measure at a time. The more you can just take it one measure at a time and not make any mistakes. the faster you will learn the song, even though that's not really <laughs> that much fun to play that slow. And then the next measure moves to an A7 chord. This measure is a little bit tricky because as soon as you slide it from that first fret, you slide from one to two, and as soon as you get to that two, you hit the bass note with your thumb on the A, and then move over to the D string with your thumb, and the high E string with your index finger 
on the next eighth note. And then the next eighth note, you have the G string with your thumb, and then the third fret of the high string with your third finger, you have to reach up and grab that. So, And then back to the second fret of the B string by itself, and then the A string and the high string. Thumb, middle finger, and then hit the second fret, come down on the second fret of the high E string with a melody note, and then your last bass note on that second fret of the D that's already being. This is a weird one. Do it as slow as you need to. So let me play those four measures for you all together. Next measure is just an E chord, and the bass notes are here are just E, D, A, D throughout the whole thing. So, and the melody notes are uh, the first two eighth notes are just the open high E string, and then the first fret you're already fretting on the G string. So, and then uh, that takes care of the first two beats, and then on beat three you have the open B string, and then you have to put your pinky down the second fret of the B string for the next eighth note, and then the high E string open, so. One more time. Next measure, you stay on that E, and the bass notes are, stay simple, so here, so just E and D, E, D, and the melody notes are um, index finger, G, on the end of one. And then on two, you have the open B string. And on the end of two, you have the third fret of the high E string, so. And you wanna bend that third fret with your pinky up. That's a killer one to keep the rest of that chord steady and just bend that note, so. Then you have your two bass notes and then you come back down with your pinky on the end of four to the second fret of the high A string, so. So that whole measure. That's a bit of a weird one. Next measure moves to a B7. And the first two quarter notes are just the, the B note on the second fret of the A string that you're already fretting, and then the G and D strings with your thumb. On beat three, you have to move your middle finger over to the fifth of the chord to grab that F sharp, and you put your pinky down on the third fret of the B string, and bend it up on beat three. And then your um, index finger is already fretting the first fret of the D string, so you move your bass note over to that and do the third fret of the B string again for that bend. So, something like that. And then you bow back to the regular B7 and finish off with something that's a little bit more simple. So your that ends up being your bass line for the next measure. And the melody on top is just the open B string. Open B string, then the G string you're already hitting with your second fret, and then your B string again. So that would be the next measure. So I'm gonna play the second uh, four measures of the first uh, little variation for you. And then I will play the entire uh, first variation for you, at least the first time through. You play this first variation twice. First time, take the first ending. Second time, take the second ending. We'll get to the second ending here in a second. Let me play this for you. After that, you go through and play the first uh, five measures of this again, just the way you normally would. When you get to this point, you go to a, a B7, and the bass notes are just A, D, E, D, and the melody notes on top are just... So, G string, B string with that, 
and then once you have go to the E string on beat three, you have to go three and with your uh, fourth finger out on the third fret of the high E string and slide it down to the second fret. And then you go to the uh, D string and finish that measure with the high E string. It's a lot easier to hear it and see it than it is to explain it. So. And when you get to this point, you have this bluesy turnaround uh, to end things off with uh, for the first variation. And it's just the fourth fret of the A string, third fret of the G string, and you hit a low open E string, and then those two notes, then the high E string, then slide this down one fret to the third fret and second fret there, and then do the same thing, low E, these two notes, on the A and G strings, and then the open high E string. And then the next measure is open E, open G. Then you kind of hammer on your uh, E shape. Then the high E string, low E string. Pinky comes down on the second fret of the B string. And then thumb gets the second fret of the D string along with the open B string, and then the high E note uh, to end things off. So those two measures all together. And that's the end of the first variation. I really recommend just working on only that by itself, even then chunking it up into just measure by measure, one at a time. Uh, second uh, variation is nice because the fingerings for the chords, at least in the beginning, stay really closely to the same, or if not identical. It's just the right hand changes quite a bit. So you have the same E7 shape. But the pattern with your right hand changes a lot. So thumb on the low E string, D string with your thumb, and then thumb and index finger on the G and high E strings. So do do do. And then just the seventh fret of the G string that you're already fretting. And then the low E string and uh, the B string with your thumb and middle finger. And then the high E string with your index finger. And finish that off with a thumb on the D string. And, and this is a pattern, like I would just recommend getting this down. Because there's a lot of hopping with your thumb. Because you're basically playing the same thing for the next two measures. It has a little bit of variation on the third measure, but the next measure is just collapsing down to that E diminished again. Play the same thing. And then go back up to the E7. And here you have the same starting, but then you play the open high E string and then you play the low E string and the B string. On the B string, you play the eighth fret and bend it up with your pinky. And then back to the open high E string and finish with the D string, so. And this is the part that gave me a lot of trouble. For some reason, I was wanting to double up on an index finger here and I had to break that habit and stick to straight alternating index in the middle. It felt a little weird. And uh, the next, um, so let me play those three for you just so you can get a feel for it. The next measure moves to an A7 chord and the bass notes are just A, D, A, G. And then um, the melody notes are open B, first fret of the B, second fret of the B, third fret of the high E, and those are three eighth notes and then a quarter note. And then two more eighth notes, open E, second fret of the E. But the way you have to play it with this shape, because you have to have this A7 feel on the whole time for the bass notes is. And one more time. Then you move to an E7 chord for the next measure and the bass notes are just E, D, E, G. And the notes on top are just. So, da, 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 da. open E, open B, second fret of the B, 
open B. And just think about the rhythm. Da, 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 da. And put the bass with that, so. Next measure stays on that E7 chord or E chord, and um, I'll play it for you and then describe it because it's pretty tricky. So we have E, low e, open E, G string with your index finger, G and B strings with your thumb, third fret of the high E with your pinky bent up, low E, open, index finger on the G string, then you're gonna pinch the D and B strings with your thumb and middle finger. And then get the second fret of the high E string with your index finger. So it's a tricky one. And then you move, in the next measure you move to a B7 and play this. So A string with your thumb, G string with your index finger, pinch the D and B strings with your thumb and middle finger, and then you're gonna go over to the low E string, second fret, and the third fret of the B string, and pinch those two notes. Bend it up with your pinky, and then go over to the D string, same thing. And that's that measure on that B7, so. And stay on that B7 in the next measure. It's just that you just have leave your middle finger where it is there on the fifth, that F sharp, and bounce forth between the low E and D strings with your thumb. And then for the melody on top, you just have da da da. So you don't have to move your chord around at all for this measure, which is nice. And that's just the B, G, B strings. And that's really the first round of the second variation, so let me play that for you. It's much easier to play than it is to describe. But yeah, the second run through this uh, starts off the exact same way with this. And when you get to this next part where it goes back to this E7, it changes a little bit to that. So low E, high E is being fretted on the seventh fret already. And then D string, open E, and then you have to hit the uh, low open E string and the eighth fret of the B string, but bend it up. And then the high E string and then the D string. So your thumb is just going and on top. And that's a nasty one to me just because there's so much bending and holding down. But it's, it's not really that much different from anything you played before. So those first three measures of the second variation would be And this next measure goes to an A7, and this one gave me a lot of trouble, and you'll see why here in a second. I'll play it for you. It's a lot of da -da 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 -da, alternating with the index and middle finger. So your bass notes are just A, D, A, D, but you have, I'll, I'll play just the melody notes, and then we'll talk about the fingering for the left hand. Open, B, first fret of the B, second fret of the B, open, high E, third fret of the high E, second fret of the B, second fret of the high E. But the way you have to play it uh, with your left hand finger here is this. Then open. You're already fretting the second fret here with your third finger. So that's the main shape is an A7 with these two fingers. So that pinky has to Jump up and grab the third fret of the high E string and then back down to the second fret of the high E. So that's pretty nasty. In the next measure, get a little bit of a break. Not too bad. So high E and low E together on a quarter note and then the next two eighth notes. Thumb on the 
you're playing an E chord, so thumb on the D string, then the open B string with your index finger. A string, then put your pinky down on the second fret of the B string, then jump up here with your thumb on the G string that's already being fretted, first uh, fret of the G, and then the open E string. So, not too hard there. From there you move to a B7 chord and play that. Um, a string, thumb, B string, index finger, G string, thumb, put your pinky up to the third fret of the high E string, put that with your middle finger, then collapse uh, your second finger back down to the second fret of the high E string, sorry, low E string, get it with your thumb, and then your pinky moves back to the second fret of the high E string, and then your thumb goes to the D string, and then you play the open high E string, all in this B7 chord, so. One more time. And this leads us uh, to kind of the closeout turnaround lick for the second variation, which is just on E chord. I'll play it for you. And that's it. So you have your low E string, have your E shape on, and then move over to your D string with your thumb. And then with my index finger, I play the open G string and hammer on real quick and then hit the high E string open with my middle finger, and then the low open E string with my thumb, then pinky, second fret of the B string, and then pull it off. And as soon as I pull it off, I hit my A string with my thumb, and then I hit my open high E string. This is a bit weird, so. One more time slowly. And then the next measure is like breakville, you get just a bass line, E, D, E, D, before moving into the third variation. So let me play through the second time through the second variation. Uh, here it is for you. And um, if you want, again, if you want to see this all the way through, just go to the end of the video. You can see the performance of the tab and everything. Uh, you can half speed it if you're watching this on YouTube. That helps a lot too. So here you go. Okay, last variation gets into um, some really weird kind of sweep thing with the <laughs> right hand that's very typical of Doc Watson. A lot like what uh, popped up in Wind and Warm if you watched that video at all. Um, so back to our E7 chord. Something like that. There you go. So I'm just playing the open E string with my thumb, then the D string with my thumb. And I sweep down the high E, B, and G strings with my index finger. And then I pinch my thumb and middle finger on the low E and B strings. Then the high E string with my index finger. And then the D string with my thumb. So, And that's the pattern that you need to work on for this variation at the beginning. If you don't have that down, it's going to be really tough to do it. So just stick this chord on and work on that pattern because you have it three times in a row here. A little bit slower. Then move to your E diminished, same exact thing. And then here in the next measure, it starts off the same, but it kind of ends with that little bend on your pinky. So when you, once you reach the end of your sweep, you have to reach the low E string with your thumb and the eighth fret of the B string with your pinky, hit both of them, but bend the pinky note up. And then the high E, open, and then your thumb on the, the D string there, so. One more time. So that's pretty tough, those three measures together. The next measure moves to an A7, and it's a little bit weird on this one compared to the other two variations. Um, it starts off, normally I start off the melody with my middle finger on this, I have to start with my index finger, otherwise it gets tied up. Start with an A string by itself, then 
first fret of the B string with your index finger, both on the, both the left and right hands, and then you move to an A7 chord with these two fingers. And when you do that, you hit with your thumb on the D string and your middle finger on the B. And just the bass notes are just A, D, A, D, and then, and then the open high E, third fret of the high E, second fret of the B string that you're already fretting, and then come back with your pinky on the high E string, second fret, so super slow. One more time. From there, move to just an E chord. And then all that is is high E strings together, middle finger and thumb, index finger on the G string, thumb on the D string, and then thumb on the A, and uh, middle finger on the open B. Pinky down on the B with the index finger for this hand, thumb, second fret of the D string that's already being fretted, then the open high E string. So. So let me play uh, that second variation for you up to this point. Okay, next measure stays on that E. You just play the first two quarter notes are just thumb notes. The next two quarter notes, so the bass pattern for this measure is just thumb on the E, D, a, D. As soon as you go to that first A, you have your pinky on the high E string third fret, then the open high E string, and then on the and of four, your pinky comes down to the second fret there. So this is a bit of a word. One more time. And from there you move to B7, but you start off with your lowest bass note on that F sharp with your second finger. And you just play low E string, G string, D string with your thumb. So thumb, index, thumb. And right here you have two quarter notes, but on the quarter notes you're gonna pinch with your thumb and middle finger and bend each time your pinky gets third fret of the B string and your low no bass note stays here on the F sharp with your middle finger. So just... And that's the challenge to keep, to not do that, to bend both of them. You have to keep this finger still while I'm bending that first note. So, here, so those two measures. And from there, you keep that B7 on and you just go. So, not too bad there. Keep, just keep your fingers in the same position. And your thumb just goes E, D, E. D, and then your index finger and middle finger or the melody notes just go open B, second fret of the G, open B. Not too bad. So that's really the end of the first phrase of um, this last variation. Let me play that for you all the way through. And yes, we're getting close to being done. Um, this is really cool because the next three measures start out the exact same way as the first time through this last variation. And then we only have four measures left till we're finished. So the next measure goes to an A7. It starts off with just the low E string. And then the next bass note is an A. And then the next bass note is the note you're gonna be fretting on the D string, then back to an A, so E, A, D, A, and the melody on top, on the end of one, first fret, and then slide up to the second fret, so on beat three, put your pinky down on the third fret of the high E string, while your thumb gets the D string. Index finger on the and of three will get the second fret that's being fretted on the B. And then on four, you have quarter note, just pinch the A string in the second fret and the high E with the middle.
middle finger. So. And there you go to an E major chord. This one's a little bit easier, so pinch the high E strings, and of one, first finger on the G string. And then your bass line for this is just E, D, A, D. So on two, it goes to the D with your thumb. And then on three, you have two eighth notes with uh, your in your melody and your bass note. It just stays as it normally would on the A string. And those two melody notes are the open B and the second fret of the B. So you have to put your pinky down. And then your thumb gets uh, the D string for the bass line and then the open high E string. So the next measure just moves to a B7 chord and the bass notes are just the A string, D string. Then you have to hop over to get that F sharp on the low E string and then back to the D string. So A, D, E, D. And the melody notes there are just on the end of one, you have the G string. You're already being fretted on the second fret. And then you have to, on the end of two, you have to grab the third fret of the high E string with your pinky. And on the end of three, you have to move that back down to the second fret. And then, and on the end of four, you just have the open high E string. So. And the last measure is just kind of a really bluesy lake. Uh, so let's say we're going into from that last, the last measure we did at the B7. First thing I do is I hit a low E string, open, and then I go. So second fret of the D, open D, second fret of the A, back to the open D. So that's the first little chunk I think of. And that's a pull off. And then from there, the next little chunk that I think of is just walking down the blue scale from this fifth. So second fret of the A string, first fret of the A string, open A string, third fret of the low E string, bend it up, then hit the open low E. And then I hit a big fat E chord to finish with, so. Something like that. And I, I think I'll play that different every time, so uh, the variations on that are always fun to come up with. So let me play through the second time through that last variation for you. Okay, I know that this is a lot. This is a long video and there's a lot to work on here, but this is kind of like required reading for a course. If you want to be a fingerstyle guitarist, particularly Travis picking, um, then this is a song that you just need to learn. So just take the next three to six months, chip away at it, learn all the notes really slow, then work on getting up to speed and then work on polishing it up. I feel like I'm always polishing these types of tunes. They could always be better. And if you need help with any of the basics or if you need help learning a different song, go to guitarfam.com. Create your complimentary account, and then you can even sign up uh, for a one-on-one -on -one personal lesson with me. The first one's complimentary, so there's no risk. I'll be looking forward to meeting you. And uh, one more thing, if you could, just leave a comment below letting us know which songs that you would like to learn or see next here on the channel. That way we can kind of prioritize which videos we do next, and we will definitely appreciate that. See you later.